so much uh, risk in switching over and there's already the, the investment of the, the current technology or like what's why wouldn't you pivot there's there's so much involved here at any, and at the end of the day what it, what it boils right down to is you're looking at um, we've done this for over a hundred years and they're ingrained into it so I don't know if you're aware of it but my job at, uh, at Ford Motor Company was engine engineer. I, um, I helped develop the Vulcan V6, the Penta, <clears throat> um, uh, the Mark, uh, sorry, the Mark I, or sorry. Anyways, uh, a bunch of different uh, V8 engines, uh, four-cylinder engines, all kinds of stuff. And um, after getting into an electric car, actually, I was on the EV1 team, and I was sold. I really, I, I, and since then I've worked on other engines like the Pentastar and things like that for the price. But I will tell you that once you have a taste of honey, it's <laughs> tough to go back to vinegar. And, and that's basically what happened to me. However, that is not the case with everyone. Some people have been so emotionally invested in noise and gasoline, that it's impossible to, for them to make that transition. Um, um, uh, there's a there's yes, an expression. Yes, 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 yes. He's a he's a futurist. He's got a PhD. He's got a lot of really cool videos um, <sighs> that, that talk about why people do what they do. He's a psychologist. Anyway, he, um, or a psychiatrist, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, he prefers to be called futures now. And he has a saying that I use continuously. When the I went into that one blind. <laughs> I went into that one blind. That last, that final gate was a blind shot completely, just like that other one that I did. So, if you've grown up oh, wait, no. with um, I wanted to spectate. cars, and, and I will say that oh, I have me as well, but I think I'm an exception. When you grow up with cars and the roar of a big V8 and all the other stuff that goes along with that that uh, mantra, you you have a real, real hard time considering moving to something else. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I think that's what it's all boiled right down to. So when I talk to little kids, like 7 to 13 or whatever, uh, basically, uh, uh, what would that be? Babies to to adolescents or teenage. Those those folks don't think at all at all, and it doesn't matter whether it's boys or girls. They don't think at all like their moms and dads. They hate the smell of gasoline. They have no no concept of ever buying a uh, a gasoline car. Right. And in five years, those thirteen year olds are going to be eighteen, and and uh, they're they're going to be buying electric. And your parents are going to probably catch on after that. On, on the, the idea of, uh, you know, hard to, hard to overcome, I think half the problem with the adoption of EVs, and especially originally the hybrids of the you know, early 2000s, in my opinion, the biggest problem we ever made as, a, as a, I guess, as a species almost, was trying to sell uh, hybrid technology as green and as uh, economical. It should have been looked at as... This is the uh, blind, completely exactly. blind. I'm not even looking. <laughs> Coming over the hell, you. Yeah. Uh.